In the last broadcast, we talked about the accelerated arrival of new streams of energy to planet Earth. Energies that will raise the vibration of everything and manifest a new ascended template for consciousness. And we mentioned a few of the things that at a human level we might begin to experience during the year ahead. For example, changing patterns of sleep, more out of body or multi-dimensional activity, the fact that we might find that we are le eating less and eating less heavier foods like meat, and the fact that we will also become much more sensitive to energy. But tonight, really, I want to talk about the development of telepathy, the sense of interconnectedness, the marriage of individuality and consciousness. The development of ethereal interconnectivity and telepathy are synonymous with evolutionary uplifts because a greater sense of interconnectedness is something that is associated with higher states of consciousness. The basic idea is that the universe becomes more stable and safer if the sum of the parts evolve to resonate at the highest possible level. Now the most highly ascended or evolved beings are associated with the energy of unconditional love and compassion. And these great spiritual beings, for example, the Christ, are so, ex uh, so ascended, so interconnected, that they permeate every facet of everything. They are truly cosmic, formless, yet everywhere. In some respects, the resurrection of the Christ was a simple demonstration of this, the idea of existence beyond physicality, existence beyond the mortal coil. For us, this ascension because there will be other ascensions, is about the marriage of individuality and group consciousness. We all have a sense of our individuality, but through the merging of dimensions, which have previously been separate, we will begin to experience enhanced levels of ethereal interconnectivity, empathy and telepathy. If we look back through time, we can see that humanity at a physical and material level has become increasingly interconnected. Firstly, through the role of empire, the esoteric role of empire was to bring the world together. More recently, we've had technological innovations. Our telephones and computers can all talk to each other now. But what I'm going to suggest is that in 2011, we begin to lift this level of interconnectedness out of the material, out of the technology that we have developed and into the dimension of the ethereal, multiple dimensions projected directly from within us rather than through an electromagnetic device. Unquestionably this represents a quantum leap for us all because we will all be in contact not just with each other, but with many different types of consciousness, from the elemental kingdoms of nature to the ascended masters, guides, angels and extraterrestrials. So I want you to imagine a scenario where through the year we continue to become more and more interconnected at this higher mind level, this higher cosmic level and we begin to experience the emotions and effects of behavior at this new higher way. Imagine becoming so sensitive that you can feel the workings of Mother Earth at a deeper energetic level. The energies of the plants, animals and trees. Imagine being able to empathically sense the energetic vibrations who live, of human beings who live on the other side of the world. We would rediscover our identities as cosmic beings. We would become to know that we are part of a great interconnected web of consciousness, energy, and this is representative of the universe. 
the great mind, the great creative mind. Well, we'll be talking more about these things in future transmissions, but consider how our relationships with the human beings that are in closer proximity to us, the, the humans that we meet on a day-to-day -day basis might evolve, how they might work when we can feel their energies and emotions. The great extraterrestrial and ascended spiritual beings are so immersed and aligned with the higher energies that they have become beings of love and light. Our evolutionary goal is also to immerse ourselves in these energies and in so doing raise ourselves to these highest of levels. But of course the trials and tribulations of being anchored in the earthly plane makes this a significant challenge because we are exposed and subjected to all sorts of energies, all sorts of thoughts, all sorts of vibrations. And our challenge is really to start living out of our higher selves. And this means living our lives through unfolding our love and our compassion. I'll leave you with the words of the Dalai Lama when he says, love and compassion are not necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. With them, we can make a joint effort to solve the problems of the whole of humankind. Compassion is the basis of all truthful relationships. It means being present with love for ourselves and for all forms of life, including animals, fish, birds and trees. Compassion is bringing our deepest truth into our actions, no matter how much the world seems to resist, because ultimately this is all we have to give to the world and all we have to give to each other.